Welcome to an example on how to evaluate a flux integral when the surface S is given parametrically. We want to evaluate the double integral over the surface S of F dot differential S where the vector field F is given here and the surface S is the helisoid with the vector equation given by R of U comma V. U is on the closed interval from zero to two and V is on the closed interval from zero to pi with an upward orientation. So a flux integral is normally given in one of these two forms here on the left, where if the vector field F represents a velocity field of a fluid flow, the flux integral represents the volume of fluid flow across the surface S. The units would be volume per unit of time. So if S is the oriented surface given by R of U comma V, and R is the region in the UV plane, so R is the projection of S onto the UV plane, then we can evaluate a flux integral by evaluating this double integral here on the far right over the region R. So the flux integral is equal to the double integral over the region R on the UV plane of F dot the partial derivative of R with respect to U crossed with the partial derivative of R with respect to V differential A, where differential A would be equal to du dV or dV du. So going back to our problem, before we set this up, let's look at this graphically. So the surface S is graphed here in green and the vector field F is graphed in gray. If we look down on the UV plane, we can see the region R is this half circle or semicircle and the value of the flux integral is going to be the flow across the surface in volume per unit of time. And because the orientation is upward, we can see the value of the flux integral is going to be positive. So going back to our work, again we're going to set this up as a double integral over the region R, but the first thing we need to do is write the vector field F as a function of U and V, since differential A is equal to du dV or dV du. So looking at R of U comma V, notice how X equals U cosine V, Y equals U sine V, and z equals v. So the vector field f of u comma v has an x component that's equal to y. So the x component would be u sine v. The y component is negative x and therefore the y component is going to be negative u cosine v. And the z component is z cubed which would be v cubed. And now let's determine the partial derivatives of r with respect to u and v. So the partial of r with respect to u would have an x component that's a derivative of u cosine v with respect to u, which would be cosine v. The y component would be the derivative of u sine v with respect to u, which would be sine v. And the z component would be the derivative of v with respect to u, which would be zero. And now for the partial with respect to v, the x component would be the derivative of u cosine v with respect to v, which would be u times negative sine v, or negative u sine v. The y component would be the derivative of u sine v with respect to v, which would be u cosine v. And the z component would be the derivative of v with respect to v, which is one. Now let's go ahead and find the cross product, and we'll set this up as a three by three determinant. So to determine the cross product, the first row are the unit vectors i, j, and k. The second row are the components of the partial with respect to u. The third row are the components of the partial of r with respect to v. And now using expansion by minors, to determine this first two by two determinant, we eliminate the row and column of the i vector. So we eliminate row one, column one. These four elements make up this first two by two determinant times i. And then we have minus. For the next two by two determinant, we eliminate the row and column of the j vector. So the remaining elements make up the second two by two determinant. And then for the last two by two determinant, we eliminate the row and column of the k vector. So we eliminate row one, column three, which gives us these four elements. And now for each two by two determinant, we're going to find this product minus this product. 
So here we have sine v times one minus zero. So we have sine v times i, and then minus cosine v times one minus zero. So we have minus cosine v times j. And here we have u cosine squared v minus negative u sine squared v, which gives us u cosine squared v plus u sine squared v times k. But notice how here if we factor out u, we'd have u times the quantity cosine squared v plus sine squared v. We should recognize this identity. This simplifies to u times one, and therefore the components of the cross product are angle bracket sine v comma negative cosine v comma u. So going back to our first slide, we now know the cross product of these partial derivatives would have components sine v comma negative cosine v comma u. So the given flux integral is equal to the double integral over the region R. Remember the region R is S protected under the UV plane, which would be this region here. And then we have F of U comma V, which we have here. So angle bracket U sine V comma negative U cosine V comma V cubed, dotted with the cross product, which we just found, that has components sine V comma negative cosine V comma U differential A. Now differential A is equal to du dv, so we have the double integral over the region R of this dot product. So we have du dv, the limits of integration for u are going to be from zero to two, also given here. And the limits of integration for v will be from zero to pi to trace out the region R, also given here. So for the next step, we'll find this dot product and then evaluate the double integral. So for the dot product we have u sine v times sine v, that's u sine squared v. And then we have plus negative u cosine v times negative cosine v, that's plus u cosine squared v. And then we have v cubed times u, so just plus u v cubed du dv. But notice how for these two terms, again if we factor out u, we'd have u times the quantity sine squared v plus cosine squared v. So this would simplify to just u times one. So we finally have the double integral of u plus u v cubed. And now we integrate with respect to u, so we have the integral from zero to pi of, we'd have u squared divided by two or one half u squared plus u squared divided by two times v cubed, that'd be one half u squared v cubed. Performing substitution for u, when u is two, we have one half times two squared plus one half times two squared v cubed. And when u is zero, both terms are zero. So simplifying, we get the integral from zero to pi of, this is just going to be two, this is going to be two v cubed. Now integrating with respect to v, we have two v plus two times v to the fourth divided by four, that'd be one half v to the fourth. When v equals pi, we have two times pi plus one half times pi to the fourth. And when v is zero, both terms are zero. So the exact value of the flux integral is two pi, and this would be plus one half pi to the fourth which is a decimal approximation, is approximately 54.9877. I hope you found this helpful.